Pakistan is in the stranglehold of perhaps its worst nightmare, with its exchequer staring into the abyss of bankruptcy and unrest building up over the impending arrest of its former Prime Minister Imran Khan. Even as the country desperately struggles to stay afloat, there is theatre of the absurd on display involving Khan and charges of him having grabbed watches that he received as gifts as Prime Minister. To get a perspective on what the future holds for the country, my entire report spoke to Anwar Iqbal, one of Pakistan's most respected journalists and commentators, who is also the Don newspaper's long-standing Washington correspondent, Anwar Iqbal. Anwar Iqbal, you are a My entire reports per. Take uh, how Pakistan. Call me, my brother. You are actually flowers. Ki bajaye, uh, cauliflower. Se kiya karein. ठीक है. अच्छा मैं देख रहा हूँ और सुन रहा हूँ आजकल पाकिस्तान में बड़ा मायूसी का दौर चल रहा है और मुफ्लिसी बढ़ गई हैं लोग एक दूसरे पे उतर आए हैं मार मारने काटने के लिए आपको क्या लग रहा है क्या हो रहा है सर देखें ये तो होना था एक दिन इसलिए कि इफ यू लिव बियोंड योर मींस फॉर सो लॉन्ग तो एक दिन जो आपने फंसना था हमारे साथ जो मेन प्रॉब्लम ये था कि हमने अपनी सारी पॉलिसी जो बनाई थी वो एक वन पॉइंट पे थी कि हमारी स्ट्रेटजिक लोकेशन ऐसी है कि हमें हर वक्त कोई ना कोई सपोर्ट करता रहेगा तो ये जो हमने सपोज किया था वो चलता रहा 50 प्लस इयर्स एक्चुअली मोर देन 60 इयर्स पीपल ऑलवेज से कंटिन्यू टू सपोर्ट अस बट देन यू नो कि हमें ये बात समझ में आनी चाहिए थी कि एक वक्त ऐसा आता है जब वक्त जो है ना टाइम आपसे आगे निकल जाता है और हमारे साथ यही हुआ कि चेंजेस होंगे जो हमने सोचा नहीं था मसलन जब ये अफगान वॉर शुरू हुई थी तो आपको याद होगा कि हर पावर ने इंक्लूडिंग द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स सब ने सपोज किया था कि सोवियत यूनियन टूटने नहीं लगा होगा ये कि ये लंबी वॉर चलेगी और इसलिए पाकिस्तान ने भी इजाजत दी और इसलिए सऊदी अरब सारों ने अपने जितने दुनिया जहान के पागल एक्सट्रीमिस्ट थे वो पाकिस्तान और अफगानिस्तान भेज दिए कि ये तो 50 60 साल जंग चलेगी उसमें लड़ लड़ के ये सोवियत यूनियन को भी वीकेंड करेंगे खुद भी मर जाएंगे तो हमारे तरफ दोनों तरफ से फायदा है हम इनसे इनसे हमारी जान भी छूट जाएगी और सोवियत यूनियन भी वीकेंड होगा टूटने का किसी ने नहीं सोचा था वो टूट गया अब जब वो टूटा तो आहिस्ता आहिस्ता पूरी जो है ना पाकिस्तान की जो पूरी इंपॉर्टेंट सीट वाज इन अ वे इट वाज अ गेट टू द सोवियत एंपायर अफगानिस्तान वाज अ पार्ट ऑफ द सोवियत एंपायर इन अ वे तो वो वो खत्म हो गया स्टेटस आपका जिसके खिलाफ पाकिस्तान लड़ा वही चीज पाकिस्तान के खिलाफ चली गई और अब आपके अब अब मसला जो है वेस्ट ने बंगा लिया है चाइना से चाइना से पाकिस्तान लड़ना नहीं चाहता अगर आप लड़ना नहीं चाहते तो जाहिर है अब स्ट्रेटजिकली आप वेस्ट के लिए इंपॉर्टेंट इतने नहीं रहे जितने पहले थे और अब आपको सपोर्ट नहीं मिल रही है तो इस तरह तो आप पूरी नेशनल इकॉनमी वन पॉइंट पे तो नहीं बिल्ड करते ना राइट राइट यू नो टू टू has come to his rescue for a short while. I'm talking, of course, about the arrest operations being uh, paused because there is a Punjab Super League tournament starting from March 19th. No, I think that is how it should have been. <laughs> After all, he played cricket all his life and he's, <laughs> he's a respectable uh, cricketer, isn't he? I mean, like everybody respects, him. Yeah. respects him as a cricketer. Uh, he was one of those who were not born involved in any scandal they played well it was respected even in india uh popular mm, i mean i remember the days he was a big name in england i was a student there and how uh, english women used to go crazy after him yeah. so cricket is the the game that brought him here that uh, assured him into politics and cricket should protect him why not <laughs> Uh, you know, it, it is the theater of the absurd being played in Pakistan because Khan has been accused of selling and or grabbing state gifts that he received as prime minister. Isn't that extraordinary? I mean, it's that's what it has come down to. I, I, and look at the case. I mean, I'm not a Khan supporter, but yeah. look at it. I mean, he, he's probably the only one who paid according to what is required. 
I mean, it, it is not his fault that you require uh, the buyer to pay less than half of the price. So he did pay as much as he was required to and bought these two, two watches, I think, or three watches, whatever it was, it was not, not much. I mean, in 2008, uh, Nawaz Sharif uh, purchased a Mercedes 2000, I think, for six lakh rupees. When you couldn't even buy what we used to call this Suzuki Dabba, which is called uh, Maruti in India. Yeah. Um, Maruti was for uh, was eight and a half lakh rupees in Pakistan. And he bought a Mercedes <laughs> for six lakh rupees. So you can imagine, I mean, the, everybody has taken gifts from there and paying. Uh, most of them did not even pay anything. Some did, most of them did not. But of course, they are not being pursued because you see, I think, I don't know whether it happens in India or not, but it, this happens a lot in Pakistan, which is this tradition of when you are in power, you register about uh, 100 cases against uh, your main opposition leader uh, or rather leaders uh, all across the country to keep him busy. I mean, or, or her in case of Benazir. And that leader would be would travel all across the country. One day he would be required to appear before a court in Karachi. The next day he would appear in a court in Islamabad. Then he would have to fly to Quetta, then from Quetta to Peshawar. And that kept him busy most of the time. I mean, Zardari spent his right. lifetime either in jail or in courts. So did Benazir. So, so did the others. I mean, Nawaz Sharif did have to do as much traveling because he was very rich. So he could afford all uh, very expensive lawyers who always represented him. Uh, so in a way, he had this cushion. But this this tradition should end, you know. I mean, like you, this is how the judiciary loses its respect. You are using judiciary to make pol political gains, you know. That you, sh that you should not. You should show some respect to the right. judiciary. Of course, if there if something happened, do go to the court. Uh, do get a case registered, but only if something happens, not for political. Yeah. Where do you think this uh, culture of almost knee-jerk vendetta that you just described, uh, where does it come from? What is the context? I think it comes from the, our colonial past. In the British state, that was the tradition. That's what the British uh, authorities used to do against Indian leaders. Uh, but I think, fortunately, in, in, in India, you probably curb this practice. It is still happens, but not as widely as it happened in Pakistan. In Pakistan, it multiplied. Yeah, yeah. No, in, in fact, in India, it, even now, it's not that prevalent. It, it's happening for sure, but it's not at the scale, nearly at the scale that's no, no, not at all. going on in Pakistan. Pakistan, it's almost a mandatory thing, it seems. It is. As soon as I'm mean, like uh, uh, Shadi Zahur Ilahi, who was uh, the main opposition leader to Dutsakar Ali Bhutto, was arrested in Bhans Kachori case. <laughs> I that you had to in the buffalo. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. It, it, on the face of it, it is hilarious. I mean, Imama Khan, Imran Khan's former wife. I mean, look at her back background. And, and she did a lot of work in Pakistan charity. And she was introducing Pakistani garments and particularly women's garments and uh, shoes, etc in the international ma market and she was doing a lot of work for Pakistan besides being Imran Khan's wife but they they registered a case Nawaz Sharif registered a case against her for stealing tiles from Taxila she never oh. did she wouldn't steal anything like that but they registered a case that she stole tiles from uh, Taxila and uh, took them to England which she had not she said that those were uh, tiles that she bought from the market, they were m made to look like the tiles found in discovered in Taxila, but they had nothing to do with Taxila. They were built in the year she bought, they were made the year she bought them. Uh, but you know, she, I mean, so much so that she actually had to leave the country. So, I mean, it's, it's, I mean do you think Yemaima Khan would steal tiles? Do you think Zori Lai would steal the buffalo? Um, I mean, what? There has to be an end to this absurdity. You you couldn't write it uh, something like this. That if if you wrote a novel that says this, people would think this is absurd, and it's actually it's actually happened there. 
it do, it do, it does actually <laughs> it still does uh what happened when the arrest is reactivated do you think uh, the cadres of his uh, tahrik e insaf will again shield him i think that he will ultimately appear he all he is seeking is sort of the permission to the the sort of uh, a guarantee from the from the lahore high court to appear before that court in islamabad okay mm. so i mean he is seeking an assurance that he will not be arrested on his way to islamabad and the reason he fears arrest is not because he is he, uh, scared of uh, going to jail what he is scared of and rightly so is that if he is in their custody they will torch because they, uh, i mean they want to settle his score so they will torture him they may even slow poison him that's what he thinks i mean if he, if somebody is very really scared like that then it is also the state's duty to reassure him to provide protection and everything and that's not happening and do you really want me to believe that a district and session judge i mean actually an assistant district and session judge uh, who is a junior junior most in the judiciary he is acting on his own issuing non bailable warrants of arrest against a former prime minister for God, or it, that too in such a case i mean had he been accused of murder or something that would have been different but this is not a murder case this is a uh, sort of uh, he is supposed to have taken gifts from um, the tosha khana that uh, he was entitled to after paying what he paid so right. i mean uh, I, i i i don't think that uh, an assistant uh, session judge would have the courage to do so without support from somebody so the, in in that case uh, his insistence that this is a completely politically motivated hit on him it 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 seems to have some credibility right yes obviously i mean the man the man is you know i mean he he has a lot of flaws i mean he is not somebody He, uh, who is known for sort of holding his tongue is not somebody who is who is careful is not somebody who is politically very savvy but in this case is right right you know uh, you made an interesting uh, point earlier about uh, the fact that uh, pakistan is not willing to take on china unlike in in, in the past when it was willing to take on the soviet union and sort of be a proxy or shoulder for the americans now with that being the case and pakistan practically bankrupt as your own defense minister khawaja asif has said what is mm. the way out it, 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 it seems pakistan has never gone through this level of uh, a nightmare on all fronts reorientation of the national economy changing your foreign policies okay focusing on i mean all for foreign policies now are focused on building up the national economy and that's what pakistan should do uh, try to expand your exports reduce your imports uh, um encourage uh, uh, pakistani businessmen uh, and there are plenty of them to return to pakistan and do business there as they used to do in the 60s and 70s and for that i mean all the uh, bujrati states from karachi uh, have invested money everywhere except in pakistan i mean there's this rich pakistani here shahid khan uh, people spoke to him uh, once at the embassy and asked him he was doing a lot of ch- charity work he still does in pakistan and somebody asked him sir you do all these charity works in pakistan why don't you invest he said well for investment investment you need two things security and profit and we don't have that in pakistan but i do ch- charity there because uh, it is my country and i love it but i don't think that anybody in this situation uh, would go and invest in pakistan so we need to think when even pakistanis are reluctant to invest who else will so create an environment that would bring the money back to your country and again instead of putting all your eggs in one basket which is the chinese basket try to balance it out uh, which uh, i think they're trying to do now uh, so you have good relations with the united states as well as with china sort of improve improve your ties with the soviet union and 
above all, improve your ties with India. I mean, why not? What is, what is uh, I mean, I don't, I don't understand this obsession with India. I just do not. Right. No, but, you know, I'm glad you mentioned India. Uh, in terms of the Indian response to what's going on in Pakistan, I see on social media there is a great, great deal of uh, very gleeful schadenfreude. Uh, at the at the this, at the at what's going on in the country, a lot of people are actually exultant that mm. this is what they deserve. Now, at the same time, there are those who believe that perhaps uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi can make a grand gesture and extend some line of credit in, in, as a as a good neighbor. I mean, there are different views. What do you think India can do at this stage uh, to change uh, the course a little bit with Pakistan? First of all, I would say that the, the Indians should not rejoice. I mean, after all, we are neighbors. We may not have good relations, but when a neighbor is, is in trouble, if you can't help him, the least you can do is not to, right. you know, to, not to rejoice over it, uh, not to celebrate some some somebody's troubles, you know. Uh, but on the other hand, I also do not expect much from India, given the background that we have given the state of our relations but uh, instead of expecting a big grand gesture from india we should try to build the relationship slowly gradually and on solid grounds rather than you know i mean this again this attitude in pakistan that somebody would come and rescue you rescue you we need to get rid of that that we need to realize that nobody is going to come and rescue us we have to work right. our way out that's okay. the only in, in that context, where do you think Kashmir fits? Uh, uh, do you think if Pakistan were to agree not to focus almost single-mindedly on the issue and reach out to India, do you, you think things can turn around quickly? Mm, possibly, possibly. But I mean, those are the things that they need to be to be explored. Pakistan needs to explore, actually not just explore, but rethink its Kashmir, Kashmir policy and actually build, build a policy that suits its prison requirements. Exactly. No, I'm glad you mentioned it because what's the point of having a practically bankrupt country which is this desperate, hanging on to an issue which is 75 years old? Uh, why? I mean, it's, um, a point will come at some point when a leader would emerge perhaps in, in Islamabad who would say that, it's enough. Let's just move on with other things. Do you think there is a possibility like that? I don't know whether uh, the, any leader would say so, but the people are already saying it. I see. I think a vast majority of Pakistanis now want to forget the past and build a new relationship with India. There is so much that can be done. I, I find it tragic that uh, the, the two are not exploring it together. There is enormous amount of talent on both sides of the border. And yet we continue to do this. Mm, for no reason. I mean, for God's sake, the partition happened in 1947. And it was very tragic. A lot of people got killed and everything. But now we should, you know, I mean, Accept the fact that what is done is done, and let's move on. Right. Uh, how how do you look at the Sharif government? How do you think it's performing? I didn't expect much from them because you know what is this government? It is a co coalition of parties who never who were actually enemies. I was going to say they never agree on anything. Well, forget about agreeing on anything. They were enemies. I mean, PPP never had any love for PMLN. PMLN never right. had any passion for PPP. ANP disliked both. Maulana Fazul Rahman uh, was, was against all of them. Uh, I mean, Baloch nationalist parties have their own agenda. I mean, all the entire coalition is, uh, the, uh, I mean, the way it was built was sort of they put together all political forces in Pakistan on one point that look you're going to get into power and right. many of these parties knew that they cannot uh, without this support from whoever put them together so therefore they just jumped at this opportunity made a coalition and formed a government but when you form a government like this of sort of putting together all 
these disgruntled political forces i mean how do you expect how can you expect it to function so when are the next elections due nobody knows that's the thing oh. i mean it should be held okay. it should be held uh, at uh, at the most by october that that is the requirement right but what the what the present government is saying that there is um some people are saying that there is a provision in the constitution uh, uh that uh, the supreme court can actually uh, extend elections for two years if the country is in trouble and the country is so they are yes, exploiting the economic right. situation as well so the country is economically in, has never been in so much trouble as it is now and therefore the elections should be extended for two years yeah. i mean that would be a disaster i see uh, but, but say for the sake of argument they do indeed hold them in october how is that going to improve anything because you have uh, imran khan battling uh, a prison term as it were if it that happens uh, they were, they thought that imran khan will will simply uh, gradually slowly disappear but he did not I mean, nobody they thought that he will make some trouble what they did not realize is this reaction is more against the present ruler uh, than for Imran Khan. I mean, this was something, I would say the establishment's own, uh, own narrative backfiring. Because for 15 to 20 years, they spent the entire energy on convincing uh, the Pakistani people that these are Nawaz Sharif and the Dari Akrab, Mr. 10% and the right. uh, Dari was called what? Iron Lord, God, I mean, Nawaz Sharif was all sorts of you know, names given to them. There were stories fed to the media of their corruption and, so, and, and pe slowly people started believing them. And a time came that people were totally convinced that these are corrupt uh, uh, politicians who should not be in power. And then suddenly one day the army decides to get rid of Imran Khan, which it does. And then it brings the politicians that were labeled as corrupt by the establishment itself. So people said, oh, hold on. I mean, what is happening? Yeah. Why do you just take us for granted? So this is a reaction against this attitude of taking them for granted. It's not so much for Imran Khan, but more against put it, putting together a coalition of those politicians who were labeled as corrupt by the establishment itself. Yeah. In, in terms of electoral impact or balance, how do you compare uh, the Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz and Pakistan People's Party? Uh, are they equally balanced in terms of what they can do electorally or there is a, a major difference? PPP is finding it difficult to reroute itself in I see. Punjab, mainly because Punjab has changed. Uh, PPP is very good in rural politics, in the old feudal style politics where you gather together all the zamindars and sort of, uh, mm, instead of focusing on big cities, fo focus on a small town and rural constituencies and win the majority from there and come into power. Now, those kinds of uh, villages do not exist in Punjab anymore. Punjab has been a very rapidly urbanized and industrialized. I mean, mm. you travel from, from Peshawar, actually, so is Peshawar, from Peshawar all the way up to Rahim Yar Khan, which is where Sin begins. And you will see, you can see this change for the first time, all these traditional rural professions of like, you know, uh, pot makers, carpenters and all those things have actually have disappeared people do not buy parts from pot makers anymore or or furniture from the carpenter they bring all these things from cities actually those big shops in in the cities have opened small branches in sort of small towns as well and that's what people do so many of them became jobless and they moved to this to the cities and so Punjab went through a major social and economic change and PPP was not ready for this. It is still had these people with, with a feudal background who are no longer able to win from anywhere.
the P, uh, so PPP is finding it very difficult to re re reroute itself in, in Punjab. Yeah. You know, to change gears a bit, uh, communist China or sort of godless China has recently brokered a deal between the, uh, the Sunni bastion Saudi Arabia and Shia bastion Iran. Do you think uh, it has any role to play within Pakistan uh, now that they are brokering deals everywhere? Well, it can play a role in Pakistan, yes. But uh, the problem is that nobody is sure what to do in Pakistan. I mean, Chinese do want to help, but they don't know how. Because uh, the Pakistani politicians, they may actually you can bring them together and you can even uh, make them pledge to do something. Uh, but everybody knows that, that as soon as uh, the deal is signed, they will start violating it because there is so much mistrust and dislike for each other that, that they cannot agree on anything. I see. No, so it, it, it all sounds very depressing. Uh, I mean, I, it's almost like a dead end at this stage in terms of where it might go. Yes. And they have they themselves have built this thing, the, the, the Pakistani politicians. They just cornered themselves. I mean, there is enough for everybody that is a large enough country and it is, uh, I mean, it has only four provinces and I mean, regional parties uh, like say PPP has, is now gradually becoming a regional party, has a majority in Sindh, Baloch party is a, a majority in Balochistan, uh, KP is with Imran Khan, Punjab is uh, divided. So there is enough uh, influence, enough support for each of these right. parties and uh, all of them can actually take terms in ruling over the country but they don't want to do that right. they want everything for themselves and do not want to share anything with anybody else i mean why are they not holding these provincial elections although they're they're required to hold these elections within 90 days they know that if they do they will lose the elections and then imran, imran will capture kpn punjab right. and then for he will hold it hold it for like hold these two provinces for the next five years so even if uh, PMLN wins the f f federal election, it will have actually no place to rule over except Islamabad. Right. So right. Okay. Uh, it, that's what the people want. Yeah. So be it. I mean, how can you stop it? I mean, you took certain steps that made Imran Khan hugely popular and now face the music. You see, those Indeed. are your Indeed. And finally, to conclude, Anwar, uh, where do you think, uh, what role, how, how do you see the emergence of someone like Bilawal uh, in this context? Bilawal is good and he has a future, but not now. I mean, he still needs, first of all, he needs to be, what, 38 or something to be the yeah. prime minister. Right. Uh, he still has like five years to go. And in five years, I think he'll be ready to play his role, but not yet. But he, you think he will be a force to reckon with? I mean, if his party stays intact, I mean, PPP has a base in Sin. It can rebuild its base, base in Punjab. It needs a, needs a new leader. And Lavel can be the one. Uh, and he is educated. He is, he is good. He has a future. But he should not rush through it. Yeah. It should just sort of focus on the spade work that he needs to do yeah. to be a good leader in the future. You know, I was uh, quite taken aback by his rather unvarnished and assertive comments uh, at the United Nations some time ago when it, 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 about uh, Prime Minister Modi, because the Sharifs have been known to be a little softer on that than uh, Bilawal. Uh, how do you think they manage that balance? Because he is very outspoken when it comes to uh, the prime minister personally. But these days, all these leaders are focusing on domestic politics. So no matter what comment they make, those are intended to win over support in Pakistan. But when he actually comes, to, it, it actually comes to talk to India. I think Bilawal will be as soft as Sharif. Okay, all right. On that note, Anwar, it's always a. Great pleasure to talk to you.